Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe seated. Uh, and the story end when uh, Malcolm left the ship. God truly, truly blessed, and we ended up having uh, a ministry in the ship that flourishes. And God truly blessed. It was a blessed time. Amen. Well, we are here today to dedicate this building unto the Lord, but we really come to understand more than that. So with that, I'm asking you to stand with me and let's read together the scripture found from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And we'll, we'll read it out loud. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. May the Lord bless this portion of his word for the edification of our souls. Thank you. You may be seated. I'll ask Pete to let the scripture up for a little bit. And be before I start, I want to make sure we, we get uh, a little understanding with this. This portion has come from the King James Version of the Bible. And uh, there are some little things you need to know. When you're reading the King James Version, when you see ye... Ye, Y, E, you need to look at it as plural, okay? And when you look at you, Y, O, U, it's singular. So with this scripture, verse 16, say, know ye not. Paul is talking to the church, right? Yes. To everybody. Yes. He says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Who are the temple of God? Yeah. All of us together. Yeah. Okay? We are the temple of God. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in? So I want you to see that because the rest of the message can be clearer for you. Because the temple is not you. The temple is us. But the Spirit of God lives in me, he lives in you. It's like you don't build a temple with one stone. But you have all the stones come together as living stone, right? Yes. We together build the temple of God. Okay? So it's very important that you keep that. So, he continued to say, if any man defile the temple of God, the here again, you will have to see who temple is talking about. Okay? Him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple? Ye are. We are. Okay? With that being said, I uh, remember as a child growing up, every time uh, I listened to the radio, I had a question and nobody really could answer such a way to satisfy me. I would ask, where are the people in the radio? <laughs> they would say, yeah, they are inside the radio, but, and they would show me where I'm looking, I could not see the people. And they told me they are in the speakers because that's where the voice, but I mean, it used to bother me for a very long time until I stopped asking because I feel a little silly, like everybody knows and I don't know. But I could never find, I mean, I could not see the people. It bothers me. And then uh, how do they get there? How do they stay in there? How do they live in there? And obviously, as you get older, have better understanding. Believe me, many of us, including me, don't know all 
techniques, all the science behind how the people are in the radio. But we do know there is a radio station, right? Yeah. And then they have towers and big antennas. And then you, they have emitters and you need a receptor. You need an actual radio, right, to listen to it. Somehow they come to your house. But even when they come, the radio or the television you have will determine how they get to you too, right? If you have the cheapest radio in town, the sound will be different, even though the station may be a good station and well, everything, but if you have cheap speakers and the sound will not be good, they may have good voice, but you cannot express it the same way. But let's say you have the the latest version of radio and TV and speakers or sound everywhere. If you don't have power, what if you don't have power to, to play? You're not going to, but is, it, is, is that mean the station is not there? The station is there. The station is there. So the idea of God lives in us it's more complicated than that. Oh, we all say, well, God lives in us, and he, it's more complicated than that, and you think you understand it? I don't think so. I really don't. And if you think you do, today we're going to explore some ground and see. I believe a simple mind cannot understand because the Bible, isn't the Bible says even the heavens of heaven cannot contain God? Let's see. So the title of the message this morning, we are the temple of God. We are. The local congregation. The assembly. We are. Let's see the places of the temple. Initially, the temple was a tabernacle, according to, to Exodus 25 and 20, 227. It was, a, it was a smaller, portable house. That's where God dwelt, because they were transiting. They didn't have a place yet, so they have their building and they carry it as they go. That was the temple of God. And then in Kings chapter 6, we find out that it talks about the first permanent temple. Okay? This is the one Solomon built. But it was destroyed, of course, by the Babylonians. But then there was a second permanent temple that we found detailed in Ezra. That was built by King, you know, when King uh, Cyrus was in power. And you know the story, when Herod came, he beautified, make it much better. Because they could not build it as Solomon did. They did their best. But Herod came and make it even more beautiful. But never reach the point Solomon did it. Amen. But today... Today, the place of the temple is the Christian's body. Amen. Amen. The, the assembly of God, what we call the church. Okay? This is very big to, come to, to understand. How can he live in us? Can you imagine hosting God in you? That's big. I'd like to touch a little bit on the price of the temples. They evaluate, they estimate the tabernacle in two days' money. The cost was about $10 million in today's money. But Solomon's temple was estimated to about $500 billion. That's huge. 
$500 billion. And then the second temple, the cost was evaluated to tens of millions of dollars. Isn't that high? That's a lot of money. Don, you think you cost that much for God to dwell in you? That's some expensive temples. And our temple here, how much does it cost, Pastor Lee? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's not enough. That's expensive to us, but comparing to what God used to dwell in, that's very high in money. But if we are the temple of God, how much it costs God to get us? How much? Isn't that expensive? We are bought with a price. We are bought with a price. And you know what? Is it financing? What is the term? How long before it's paid off? Paid in full, in cash. No debt. But it says if anyone too destroys the temple, God himself will destroy him. You don't come against God's church. You don't. You will be burnt. He gave his life for it. And if you already gave his life for it, there isn't anything he won't do for it. To guard his church. But at the same time, when we think of destroying the temple of God, we automatically think because of the mentality of uh, individual being temple of God. Obviously, we think of no fried chicken. We think of no alcohol. We think of no abuse of the body. Get to the gym. Take better care of ourselves. Obviously, this is important. Obviously. And obviously, Paul talks in 1 Corinthians 3, I think it's second, one of them where he's talking about fornication. The body is not for that. Obviously, it's all that. This is definitely a part of destroying God's body. You need to keep your body. Let's say, obviously we're going to see that when you say you are a Christian, people expect certain things. So if you say you are a Christian and then you don't dress right, Maybe before God, it's nothing but his testimony. Yes, sir. And the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you do everything. I mean, it's not about whether you save or not. It's about you are the visible. That's what people see. So you evangelizing 24 hours a day at work, at home, wherever you are, so the Spirit of God lives in you, then somehow, some way, you have to take care of you because the Spirit lives in you. In First Chronicle chapter 29, David explained the temple. He explained the temple really to tell us that the temple was built such a way when people see it to say 
somebody important live here. God lives here. I mean, it, was, it wasn't built just with humility or whatever. He had big thing in mind, so he, it was mind-blowing. He wanted when people see this temple to say, wow, there must be a big God in here. So that's the way, too, when we behave, when we in our conversations, in, in ourselves, so if you keep yourself and handsome and beautiful and whatever, yeah, people apparently will be attracted and say, wow, you know, it's important. So yes, we do need the outside appearance. And you know what? God accepted it too. He accepted it. And people would say, it is so beautiful. It's awesome. I want to serve this God. I find pride in that. There would be proud to say, yeah, you know some big cathedral, some big, people are proud to say, yeah, that's where I go to church. So that's what David had in mind. So we have this building. It's just a building and we all know the temple of God is not this, it's not the building. But what do you think if we let the grass grow we let things fall in apart. I mean, we become a disgrace to the community. And they start calling, coming, leaving stuff in your door to say you need to cut this, you need to paint this, you need to fix your window. Is that a good testimony? Do you think people will drive by and, and to say, wow, I, I would like to get inside that church? I know it is a building, but it represents God, right? right? So you keep it clean the same way your testimony would attract people, even the building attracts people. They see things are going on, and they see you always keeping things neat, passing by, they'll say, wow, I need to get inside here. Something is going on here. I like this church. They don't even know the church is not the building, but that's all they see. Yeah. And I tell you something else. You see just the building standing, if you keep it right, while you are sleeping, the building is evangelizing. The building is evangelizing. God has been dealing with somebody. And every time they pass by the church, they say, man, I, and I have to get back to church. I have to get back to church. It's a conviction because it's the Holy Spirit working. So you may think you come to clean the yard. Actually, there, will, there is complaint about, man, we, we go back again in mopping and do yard or whatever. I heard it all. <laughs> but you know what? God will use this. So when you cut the grass, like yesterday I see the guys peeling stuff, believe me, it matters. Amen. Amen. And God used that. Amen. The church building is a visible representation of the presence of God. It's not the presence of God, but it's a visible representation of it. And we, you and I, we are the physical and visible representation of God. That's what we are. We need to know that. And if we know that, it will help us in watching over ourselves. People look at us and they should say, I want to be like him. I want to have what he has, what she has. You, you know in yourself you're nothing. Now, don't pump yourself up. You know you're nothing. But that's not what the other person sees. The person sees Jesus in you, not you.
And they would say, God is so beautiful. It's like your car. I see some very, very nice car. Very nice bike, motorcycle. You, you, you keep your car beautiful or whatever. People even, oh, that's so-and-so's car. When they see it, oh, the car is passing by, oh, that's so-and-so. But they just see the car. They know it. But if you have a something like one of mine, they see it too, and they're going to say, well, that's Pastor Ulysses passing by. So when they see you and, is that really Jesus passing by? Is that really the way we want to represent Christ? Christ, Jesus, God to be seen? Yes, this building, your bodies count. Now Jesus was with us. He transitioned to be in us. He says he will not let us. He will often, he would come and live in us. But there is this very important thing point out like you to understand. This building, like the temple, was rectangular, right? It was rectangular, but it was divided in different sections, right? There was the first section where everybody was welcome. Yes, sir. Everybody was welcome. And there was another portion, the priests do their yes, things, right? Yes, sir. There was another third portion. What was it? Holy. Holy of Holies. What was there? And who dwelled there? So you see the whole building, the whole temple. But God is not everywhere in the temple. He's somewhere very special. That was the Holy of Holies. And not everybody can go there. The high priest would go there once a year. And even there, he had to have it rope tied in him because he may not come back. That's how holy it was. And before he went, he had to make sure his, he had sacrificed for himself, so no sin. So when people look at the building, they see God living here. But really, even in the building, God doesn't live in it. He has a special place. So, when the Bible says we are his temple and then he lives in us, it's much deeper than that. It's not, it's not the physical, it's not the flesh, it's the heart. But even when we say the heart, I was told the people were in the speakers, right? When you open the radio, you get the speakers, you, open, you, just, you still don't see it. Do you think if they open you up and go to your heart, they'll find Jesus, God in there? True story. We have a friend. His wife had a heart transplant. And the guy was happy that his wife was going to change because she's going to have a new heart. But when the wife started to behave the same way after that, he said, what? <laughs> so it is much deeper when we say God lives in us. It's not like thinking, oh, let me hide God in here, keep him tight. No, it's very, very deep. The church is the most holy place. He lives in the most inner part of us. Where people cannot see him. They can only see us. He 
Now, every time we say temple, we cannot help but go to the first permanent tem temple. Every time you say temple, you see Solomon temple, right? Because of its fullness of splendor and glory, everybody around the world wanted to come to visit. So, obviously we are more than that because we cost more. But there are some aspects of that temple I would like to close with that. I would like to emphasize and to compare those aspects to us. And those aspects should be true in our lives. Should be. Really must be. In the construction, everything was pre-cut. You hear what I say? Yes. There was, just think of a construction field that there was no tool, no noise, no knocking, tapping, nailing, no breaking, I mean nothing. It's like uh, it's, the parts come, just Fix them, that's it. There is no trying to cut the corners. No. They come ready. The message to us is that we are pre-cut before we were brought in. It's very important. The church does not make Christians Keep that in mind. The church does not make Christian. The church is made of Christian. Born again, ready made Christian. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can make a Christian. Only. We prepared by grace, repentance. Conviction of sins. It is expected before one becomes a member of the church that the Lord already done the work of conversion in their hearts. You have a puzzle, right? Many pieces. Might be a car, a house, a plane, or whatever it is. Many pieces. All you do is find the place for the pieces. You don't go ahead and make your own shape. And I think it's sad that's what we do in church. We do do that in church. God bring people ready to just tap in. But no, 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 we want to shape him some other way. And you know what? They cannot fit. The church cannot fit. And then you ended up not having a body because the part don't just not serve. Because we have our own mindset what a Christian should be. To, be, to become a member of this church, you have to be shaped a certain way. And then God sent it with the exact shape he wanted it to. And then here we go. You don't have a church anymore. I hope we keep that in mind because yes, we do that all the time. The work was done in Calvary. That's it. Paid in full. The Lord Jesus finished it. The only thing we do is the silent work of faith. That's it. Oh, it's hard. As parents, you have in mind what you want your child to become, right? You just don't have the power. And after a while, you just have to say, Lord, 
to you. It's the same way as church. When somebody come, come in, don't already have in mind, you know, something set to say, okay, that's what you have to look like. No, they already came the way they're supposed to look like. By accepting the finished work, we become Christian. We are ready to be built into the life of the church. Now, there are workers in the church. When the parts come, all we do is a piece. You say, okay, yeah, this piece would fit here, and, or we try it doesn't work, and we put it another. But if it doesn't work, you don't just throw it away. It might be the very last minute you find, oh, that's where it's fit. But keep in mind, all we are doing is trying to find the place for the pieces. That's it. Let's stop making our own members. Let's the Lord bring the members. Another aspect in the temple... It was beautified with gold. In this construction, they had cedar, they had stones. They didn't have ordinary materials. They had the best they could have. But even the best of the best, it was still raw material. Raw material. So everything was covered with gold because raw materials as we are. Because believe me, even if you don't believe that yourself, you think you're something else. I think I'm something else. I think somebody is, I am better, better than somebody else. You think you are better than somebody else. You look at this piece where you say, I'm glad I'm not like him. I'm glad I'm not like her. It's just we have it in mind. It's like uh, uh, it's like somehow, some way in us, we are like the Pharisees. Like you look at the publican, you pray more, you give more, you come to church more, or whatever you do more, and then you look at somebody. Else, Why can't they be like me? Even with that, even if you would be what you think you are, you still need to be covered with gold. Because the carnal mind is not subject to God, neither can he. Even if you wanted to be that good, you just cannot be. Because you cannot be. Like a black man, the Bible says, cannot change the color of his skin. Can we? Oh yeah, we try all kinds of surgery. It's the same way we cannot do anything good, anything to impress God, nothing. Actually, he continues to say, even our righteousness is what? Even our righteousness is like dirty rags. The beauty of Christ has to be upon our, our lives. Jesus living in our lives makes us acceptable before God. We are purified as gold, Peter says, try by fire. And obviously they were the lighting and we are the light of the world. And the temple was filled with music. That's why music has to be a big part in our lives. Big part in our lives. And finally, the temple was consecrated to the Lord himself. To God himself. Set apart. That was for him. 
Consecration of the temple meant thousands, thousands of sacrifices. They had tens of thousands of goats or sheep. The celebration went for seven straight days. This was a big deal. A big deal. And that's what Jesus do for you and I to consecrate us to God by giving his life as sacrifice. Yeah, that's what he did. And then today we offer our bodies as sacrifice, as living sacrifice. So on this I'll say, remember I told you about we think God is in our heart, but we thinking it's in the build, build, building, but it's way deeper than that. Do you know you can be in church all your life? You're still not a Christian too? Yes, sir. It just depends where your heart is, your will, you, where you are. Because when our hearts are not yielded to the service of God, yielded to the service of God, our words are empty. Oh, you have beautiful words, good words, profound words. But your heart is not yielded. And they become empty. Our worship becomes shallow. If it's, not, if it's done without the consecration, without a consecrated, consecrated life, We must say, Lord, take me and mean it. Yes. We must say, Lord, make me and mean it. And you must say, God, use me. And when you say it, you're not saying it and thinking, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do Oh, no, 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 let the Lord do it. Yes. And you must say, I surrender all on the altar to be a pleasing sacrifice to you, Lord. So, we have, we are building the church of God. It's under construction. It's under construction. And the Lord will send the, the materials and you and I will build. So I'm asking you to come and be a worker. But the materials are people who will come. Yes. You work with them and you raise them. Yes. You see the young kids, uh, you know, the youth singing. That's the building of the kingdom. Yes. The building of the kingdom. And when somebody come... They're from outside or they say they're Christian or whatever. I tell you what, you cannot force someone to come sit down here if God doesn't bring that person here. So when that person come, don't feel like you're about ready to make to this person the way you want it. You need to see, okay, where you fit and then fit the person there. That's how it's built. So dedicate this building great. We need to, and I explain how important it is to do so. Dedicate your, yourself individually. Dedicate us as a church. But let's build the kingdom of God, and we will, our works will not be in vain. God bless you, and thank you very much.